Special thanks to Patreon supporter Destroyer of Worlds for making this tutorial possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare2 if we're here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and doing a redesign for the M109A7 Paladin. The M109 is an American 155mm turreted self-propelled howitzer, first introduced in the early 1960s to replace the M44. It has been upgraded a number of times, most recently to the M109A7. The M109 family is the most common Western indirect fire support weapon of maneuver brigades of armored and mechanized infantry divisions. The M109 has a crew of four, the section chief slash commander, the driver, the gunner, and the ammunition handler slash loader. The chief or gunner aims the cannon left or right and up and down. The British Army replaced its M109s with the AS90. Several European armed forces have or are currently replacing older M109s with the German PZH2000, which we've done a tutorial on recently. Upgrades to the M109 were introduced by the US and by Switzerland with the cancellation of US Crusader and non line of sight cannon. The M109A6 Paladin will remain the principal self propelled howitzer for the US for the foreseeable future until the new M1299 will enter service. The uh, M109A7 is basically just the pinnacle uh, version of this vehicle. Uh, basically integrated with all the new technologies and all that stuff and one of the main features also is more integration with the Bradley um, family of vehicles so it actually uses um, the engine transmission and tracks from the Bradley to kind of keep consistency with parts and makes them a little bit easier to maintain out in the field so yeah pretty interesting uh, vehicle here and a nice redesign the old uh, Paladin was I believe four years old or something like that so kind of wild, um, very old tutorial and really happy to come back and finally revisit this build and give it a nice proper redesign. Before we go ahead and jump into taking a look at the build, I do want to go ahead and give a special thanks to Patreon supporter Destroyer of Worlds for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel where you guys already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video description where you can go and pledge a small amount to the channel every month and in doing so earn a vehicle request you're choosing. It really helps support the work my do the work I do with my channel and is really greatly appreciated. So uh, again, definitely feel free to check it out if you are interested. With that though, let's go ahead and dive in here to take a look here at the Paladin, see the nice uh, redesign for it, and kind of go over everything that really there is to see for it. So, start off with we have obviously the long barrel here, the 155 uh, millimeter barrel, as you can see clearly. Really big barrel. Um, really like the way I did the muzzle brake on it. Looks really nice and. Uh, Really overall happy with the overall design for that. We then have uh, the whole front, uh, basically of the vehicle here. Um, engine located right up here in the front of the vehicle, as well as the driver's cupola. Or I say really cupola doesn't really have one, but the driver's viewports and all that stuff located right there. We have the track system, all that stuff right on the sides here, and we have obviously the turret, which is kind of the main feature here for the Paladin, um, equipped with all of its optics and. Uh, this version here, I went ahead and uh, went with the kind of armored uh, turrets up on top here. Now, of course, not all versions of the um, Paladin do have that up on top. Um, though I felt like it's really cool. I do like the versions that do have this top, so I decided to go ahead and go with it. But obviously, you can go ahead and look at some of my other tutorials and just put a machine gun up on top there or a remote turret, whatever you wanted to do. But basically, this right here is kind of what I chose. Um... This is kind of what I chose for uh, the turret there. I thought it looked the best. After that, we have uh, the back here. Obviously, all the little detailing, the racks, and uh, the back hatch here for the for the um, vehicle. But yeah, overall, pretty interesting build. Should be a fun one to add to any of your modern conflicts where you're in need of some sort of a uh, self-propelled howitzer. Anyways, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into our first layer here, we can start with layer 1. For layer 1 to go ahead and get started with here, we want to go ahead and begin with a place down an Arabic slab like so, and an Arabic top slab coming off it like so for the front. We're going to go ahead and place down a black shortcut box on its side like so, followed by two polished black stone stairs back to back, and there a black shortcut box on its side, two polished black stone stairs back to back, and there a shortcut box on its side, an air two polished black stone stairs back to back and an air black shulker box on its side like that and then an air brick slab and an air brick top slab like that for the side there of our tracks after we have that done we're going to go to each one of our shulker boxes and we're going to place down an item frame and then in that item frame we're going to place down a yellow stained glass pane in addition if you are on java we can go ahead and also place down a birchwood button on the side there of those shulker boxes 
just make sure you uh, crouch when you place them and you'll be able to place them. If you're on uh, Bedrock or Pocket Edition, you're not able to place down buttons and item frames in the same block space. So if that's the case, just go ahead and disregard the buttons and just place down the item frames instead. Anyways, after we have that done, we want to go ahead and then take our smooth sandstone. We're going to place down a row of five of smooth sandstone going across here. So from the snare slab over. And then going to the back here, we're going to go to this uh, this um, black shulker box. We're going to place down a row of five of smooth sandstone over as well. Then one, two to the side, one, two. And then the middle space here, we're going to place down two rows of three of birchwood trapdoors like so. Also in the front here, we're going to place down a birchwood trapdoor on the top slab there to both sides. At this point, we can go ahead and then take our smooth sandstone and we can just fill in the space here between those rows of five of smooth sandstone to go ahead and just create the base here of the vehicle. So this right here will just get completely filled in like so. After that, we want to go and then basically take our track design that we did over on the air side and just copy it over to here. So I'm going to go and do the same exact thing, this time a little bit faster as I've already kind of covered it. But if you need to, um, you can slow the video down or you can pause it or you can just look at the air side and build exactly what we have over there. <laughs> Either one will work. It's the same thing on both sides, so it's pretty simple. We then want to go ahead and go to each one of these shulker boxes. We're going to place on item frames and then yellow stained glass panes in those item frames like so. As well as birchwood buttons again over or on the side of the blocks as well if you um, are on Java. At this point we pretty much have this layer complete. There are a few things we need to do here by making the banners which will be used on the wheels there to kind of show that wheel spacing. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the necessary materials we'll need to make those. Um, but with that, that's going to complete the main structure there for layer one. Let's move on to our banners. All right, guys, so go ahead and move it into our banners to go ahead and get started with here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and need two yellow banners for black dye and our loom. Going into our loom, we're going to place down our yellow banners and our black dye. We're going to go and do the line that goes horizontally through the center, like so. Uh, just like this for both our banners. Each of these banners is going to be placed back into our loom, and we're going to split each one of these banners in half, basically. So we're going to have the line of black on the left side and then for our other banner here the line of black on the right side so it basically splits it in half like so. Both these banners here will go ahead and go on the sides of these polished black stone stairs. So just like this on the sides there and over here we're going to be doing basically the same thing. So just like that. And once we have that all complete there on the sides that's going to conclude layer one completely and with that we'll go ahead and move on to layer number two. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we're we'll moving into layer number two. For layer two, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down an Arabic stair on top of these two top slabs like so, followed by a dark oak wood sign coming off the front there of those stairs like so. We then want to place down a smooth sandstone block on the inside here of these two stairs, and then a row of three of sandstone walls across between those stairs. Also coming off these um, smooth sandstone blocks, we're going to place down item frames, and then we're going to place down tripwire hooks in the item frames, rotate so they're hanging downwards like so. With that all done, we want to go ahead and then place down a row of five of smooth sandstone blocks across this section here. We're going to go ahead and then follow this up and place down a stripped birchwood log to both sides on its side, followed by an item frame and a cobweb in that item frame. If you're on Java, we can go ahead and then again do the button trick by placing down a button there on the side of the block as well as the item frame to create a little bit nicer of a sprocket wheel, but again, an optional feature that's not completely necessary. At this point here on the inside, we're going to, go ahead and take our strip birch wood. We're going to place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Strip birch wood back, and same thing over here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We're going to go ahead and place down a smooth sandstone block to both sides, and then 1, 2, 3 birch wood blocks across the back there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and place down an item frame on the left side here, followed by a trip bar hook in the item frame. I'll rotate on its side at an angle like that, and then a birchwood button over here to the right side. Once we have that all complete, uh, we then want to go ahead and grab our Nerebrick slabs and stairs and also our daylight detectors. We're going to place down a Nerebrick top slab, Nerebrick stair, Nerebrick slab, and then one, two, three, four, five, and six daylight detectors all turned to the night mode. We're going to go then place down a Nerebrick slab here. After that, we're going to go and follow this up and place down a birchwood slab and a daylight detector, again, turned to night mode. Same thing will be done over here. Nerebrick top slab, stair slab, one, two, three, four, five, and six daylight detectors. Again, all these turn to the night mode. Followed by a Nerebrick slab, birchwood slab, and a daylight detector turned to night mode as well. After that, we want to go and then place down a birchwood stair, which will be coming off these two daylight detectors like so. 
an item frame coming off these stairs and then in those item frames we're going to place down a apple like so for the back brake lights with that all done right there that right there is going to almost wrap up this layer one last thing for the um mount there for that kind of holds onto the barrel to stabilize it when in motion we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate coming off this um sandstone wall like so after that's all done right there though that is going to complete layer number um two obviously you can fill the inside in here if you do want to though it's not completely necessary but yeah that right there is it for layer two let's move on to layer number three all right guys moving into our next layer we moved into layer number three for layer three to go ahead and get started with here to place down one two three four five smooth sandstone slabs and one and two birch wood slabs like that followed by an item frame here to both sides a snowball in those item frames like so we then want to place down a sandstone wall center here and then come off the sandstone wall to the sides we're going to place down a skeleton skull on both sides followed by a birchwood sign like that coming off the wall after that we're going to go and then take our pistons we're going to place down a row of uh, seven there of pistons across and we then want to take our debug stick and we want to go ahead and just use this to extend these to false now this is a feature here that's going to be available on java uh, using the debug stick and these pistons in this manner if uh, you are on a different version, um, such as Pocket Edition or Bedrock, you can go ahead and use just sandstone stairs for this situation. would work fine as well. So um, either this technique, if you're on Java and you have access to a debug stick, or um, if you are on uh, Pocket Edition or Bedrock, you can go ahead and use stairs instead. One thing also I should have done before is we do want to place down a birchwood sign on both sides of these pistons. And while we're at it also, we should also place down a row of two of birchwood planks here. Then one, two, three, four, and five sandstone blocks over. Now, once we have that done, we can now go ahead and alter these pistons like so. As you, if you update the blocks next to any of these pistons, they will uh, turn back to, you know, be a normal piston. So, uh, just go ahead and do that, and that right there will be the front. Anyways, after that, on the sides here of this uh, row of blocks, we're gonna place down a birchwood trap door. We then want to take our smooth sandstone and we're just going to run a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 blocks back. And same thing over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We're going to go ahead and then place down one block like this going on the insides here. Then a row of three of stripped birch wood. And we then just want to go ahead and fill in the insides here. Again, you don't have to, but it's something that I like to do just to make my build a little more solid. If you are looking to do an interior, you can leave um, a good portion of this hollow. Um, there are some portions that may be exposed, so just keep that in mind. Um, but you may need to fill in some gaps here and there. Um, if you do choose to make, leave it hollow. At this point though, on the sides, we're going to go ahead and go along the sides of all these sandstone blocks. And we're just going to place down birchwood trap doors all the way along the sides and close them like so. Like that, and same thing over here. So like this. After that, uh, we also want to go ahead and make one quick uh, addition on the right side here, which is going to be, we're going to be going ahead and going to our fifth trap door from the front, and we're going to place down a sandstone wall to the side there instead of that um, trap door. So that's going to be on the right side and the right side only. After this, on the back, we're going to place down a tripwire hook coming off these two sandstone blocks, as well as a skeleton skull on these two sandstone blocks, and then two sandstone walls located in this spot here. And then we just want to place down one more birchwood button on this bir stripped birchwood block. With that all done, that right there is going to conclude layer number three for the build. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, layer number four. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we'll be moving into layer number four. For layer four to get started with, we're going to place down a polished blackstone slab here sandstone slab and an air polished blackstone slab after that uh we want to go and then place down a row of one two three of birchwood slabs like so across followed by two polished blackstone slabs and then one slab like that out to the side we're going to place down a redstone repeater which will be right here on this sandstone block which is going to be have the notches spread apart like so followed by a daylight detector right there in that section and then after that we're going to place down a skeleton skull here next to the daylight detector like that followed by a daylight detector here and an air skeleton skull at an angle like so we're going to place down an item frame on the front of that daylight detector in that item frame we want to go ahead and place down a black bed which will rotate on the side and we're also going to go ahead and grab ourselves a birchwood sign and we're just going to place down a birchwood sign there on the front of the detector we then want to place down a birchwood button here on top of that sandstone block and we're going to then place down a redstone repeater on top of this birchwood um, block as well after that's all done, we're going to then place down a birchwood slab here behind the daylight detector, followed by a daylight detector to both sides. 
and we're going to then place down a row of seven of daylight detectors all the way across the back there like so. We then want to place down a sandstone wall on top of this one here for the front and we're going to then place down a birchwood trapdoor on the right side like so. Over on the left side we are going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to place down a block that comes to the side here and this is going to be a feature that we're going to be doing here if you're on um, Java. If you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, I would just place down a fence gate like that coming off the side of the wall, opened up toward it. But if you are on Java, we can go ahead and use our debug stick here again. And we can go ahead and rotate this um, using our debug stick, so setting the facing so that it connects up to our wall like so. And just a quick side note, if you're doing this, you may want to place down the wall on top as well, just in case the blocks do update. But it seems like that wall is going to be fine as is. So, um, not concerned about that. So it should be fine, fine and should be good to go, just like that there for the front. After that though, uh, we're going to then place down a row of one, two, three of sandstone blocks here. Sandstone top slab in the center there. And then a skeleton skull to both sides of this slab like that. We then want to place down one, two, and one, two, sandstone blocks forward. And then a skeleton skull again to the sides of these blocks, followed by a sandstone stair again to the sides. We then want to go ahead and grab an item frame. We're going to place down an item frame here, coming off this stair. And after that, we're going to go ahead and place down an iron bar in the item frame, like that. After that's all done, uh, we then want to go ahead and take our smooth sandstone. We're going to place down a row of seven across, followed by a second row of seven, a third row, and then a fourth row, filling this whole space in. On the sides here also, we'll go ahead and take birchwood signs and just place down birchwood signs here on the sides like that and same thing over here. After that's all, do all done there, we're going to go and place down a row of five of smooth sandstone blocks across and a smooth sandstone upside down stair on both sides there. Followed by a top slab coming off these stairs or coming off, yeah, coming off the stairs and then a row of five upside down stairs in between those like that. On the sides here of the slabs and stairs also, we're going to go and place down our birch wood signs like so. With that out of the way, uh, we're going to go and take our sandstone top slabs. We're going to place down a row of five across this section, followed by a second row of five going across, and then one and two birch with top slabs, one and two, and then again two top slabs of birch wood out to the sides there, like so. And once we have that all done there, I do believe that's it for the layer. Just trying to make sure I'm not missing anything and everything does appear to be good to go. So with that, that right there is going to conclude uh, layer number four for the build. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into layer number five. All right, guys. So moving into our next layer, we'll be going ahead and moving into layer number uh, five. So for layer five, to get started with here, we're going to place down a smooth sandstone block on top of this top slab here. Followed by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight sandstone walls going forward. We then want to place down two black concrete blocks like so, followed by a sandstone wall again, and then grabbing our polished black stone, we're going to place down two polished black stone walls like this going forward, and on the very end here wall, we're going to go and place down a black stained glass pane to the sides there. After that, uh, we want to go and then place down an item frame, which will be coming off of this uh, wall like so, and a black concrete block in the item frame like so. Also, if you're on Java, we can place a dark oakwood sign on the side of the wall as well to kind of help cover the item frame up a little bit more, create a nice uh, or better blend. At this point here, we're going to then place down a birchwood sign here on the side of this wall here, followed by a birch pressure plate on top of this wall, and then we're going to go and then also place down a skeleton school to the left side of the wall. So, like that for our stabilizer there. With that done, going back to this section here, we're going to place down a yellow stained glass pane to both sides. A smooth sandstone block in the center, followed by a birchwood, or stripped birchwood block to both sides. We're going to place down a narrow smooth sandstone block to both sides like so, followed by a sandstone wall coming off these blocks like that. And if you have your debug stick again here, a nice feature we can do here is we can go and select our glass pane and prevent it from actually connecting up to the walls. And in doing so, we create a better looking front there. And that's something that's really nice. If you're on other versions and can't do it, it's not really a big deal. But just know that this right here is kind of your best, um, you know, bet there for, because it just it looks a lot nicer um, and is a little bit more accurate. So if you can do that, definitely go. F feel free to do it. If not, then really it's no big deal. Um, anyways, after this, we're going to then place down a yellow stained glass pane to the sides there, and then going back from this, we're going to place down a sandstone wall. Going back from the stained glass panes, and then a row of um, 
or sorry, a sandstone block on both sides, then a stripped birchwood block on both sides, and then a sandstone block there in the center. After this, we're going to then place down one and two, strip birchwood, one and two, and we then want to go and fill in the space here between those blocks with rows of um, smooth sandstone. So just like that. And we're going to also place down ladders on the sides here of these smooth sandstone blocks, or these uh, stripped spruce wood blocks. We're going to go then place down a row of five of smooth sandstone, followed by a second row of five, a third row, a fourth row, and, or, and uh, we're going to go and stop at four rows of five back. Now at this point, also on the sides, we're going to go and grab our sandstone walls, and we just want to place down one, two, and three sandstone walls, and same thing over here, one, two, and three. Grabbing ourselves some spruce wood, or sorry, sorry some oak wood trapdoors to begin with. We're placed down oak wood trapdoors here, and also to the sides here. And on the very outside here, we're going to go and grab some birch wood trapdoors, and we're going to place down birch wood trapdoors like so, and make sure that they're all closed like that around there. On the back here, we're going to place down a tripwire hook here, and we're going to do the same thing over here for our little baskets. So same thing as we did on the other side here. So like this and then our tripwire hook like so. Now for the back section here we're going to place down two smooth sandstone blocks on both sides and in the center we're going to place down a loom like so. On both sides of that loom on the smooth sandstone blocks we're just going to place down a birchwood button like so. And once we have that all complete there that is going to wrap up what we have there for uh, layer number five for the build and with that we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number six. I right, guess moving into our next layer, we'll be moving into layer number six. For layer six to go ahead and get started with, we're going to place down a skeleton skull here on top of this block. After that, uh, we're going to then place down a row of two of polished blackstone pressure plates back, and a birchwood button on both sides like so. We're going to then place down a redstone repeater, like that to both sides. And after we have that done, we're going to go and grab our sandstone slabs. We're going to place down a sandstone slab here, and then one slab out to the sides. After that's uh, on both sides here it's going to be a little bit different. So on the right side of the turret we're going to place down a, a sandstone stair and we're going to go and follow it up by placing down a skeleton skull on top of that birchwood block. After that uh, we want to go and then place down a smooth sandstone full block over here on this side with a uh, skeleton skull on that strip birchwood block. So a little bit different there on the sides. Going ahead and coming off of this block we're going to place down an item frame and in that item frame we want to go and place down a uh, black stained glass pane. We're also going to go ahead and grab a birchwood pressure plate. There's going to be a birchwood pressure plate here on top of this block. And we're also going to go ahead and grab ourselves some flower pots. And we're going to be placing down flower pots on top of these two blocks right there. After that's all done, we want to go and then grab ourselves a birchwood plank. We're going to place down a birchwood plank here, followed by a sandstone wall to the side here, this side and this side like so. We then want to place down a uh, stripped birchwood block in the center like so. And we're just going to go ahead and go back from it. One, two, and three blocks. So you have a row of four. We're going to go ahead and take our stairs. We're going to place down two smooth sandstone stairs here. Then a smooth sandstone block. And then a smooth sandstone stair out to the side. There's also going to be a birch slab right here in this corner space. And then taking skeleton skulls, we're going to place down one, two, three skeleton skulls along the side there. After that's done, over here to the other side, we're going to place down a sandstone wall right here. And then a row of one, two, three sandstone stairs followed by a sandstone corner stair here and a uh, sandstone corner stair coming off that corner stair so it looks like this here and we then want to place down two birchwood slabs in this space here grabbing ourselves a birchwood fence post we're going to place down a fence post on top of this block here and then we want to go and then take skeleton skulls and place down one two three skeleton skulls like that going back at this point here we then want to place down a slab on the left side here then a stair like that we then want to go ahead and place down a row of walls right here followed by again two smooth sandstone full blocks two sandstone walls and two smooth sand sandstone slabs when we have that all finished there we're also going to go and take our birchwood signs and just place them down the sides here of the walls and this smooth sandstone full block like so in the rear and also we're going to place down a skeleton skull coming off the side of this slab to the right side we then want to take our oak wood trap doors. We're going to place down oak wood trap doors on the outer ones. So like this. And same thing over here. Like so. And then birch wood trap doors on top of these ones. Like this on the very far outside. 
so just like that on both sides there and after we have that all complete that right there is going to wrap up what we have there for layer number six for the build just trying to make sure i'm not missing anything and everything does appear to be good to go so with that that is going to conclude layer number six and with that we'll be moving into our final layers of the build all right guys moving into our final layers of the build we have layer seven through eleven for these uh, layers to go ahead and get started with, we're going to be going ahead and going to this skeleton skull in the back here. We're going to place down a row of five of iron bars that go up from it, just like so. Over on the other side, on coming off this uh, stair right here, we're actually going to place down a skeleton skull on the back of it. And on top of that, we're going to place down an end rod and then a skeleton skull on top of that end rod, like so. And then we also want to go and go to this birchwood fence post here, and we're also going to place down a row of five of iron bars up from that as well. Once we have that done, uh, we want to go and then place down a sandstone slab here, then a lever on this block, and after that we're going to place down a redstone repeater, not just spread apart, and after that we're going to go ahead and then place down two virtual buttons right there on those two blocks, like so. And then after that's all done, uh, we want to go and also place down a virtual trapdoor on top of this sandstone block. Now at this point, we're going to go and start working on our turret that we have located up on top here. So our turret here is pretty simple to do. To begin with, we're going to place down a anvil on top of the stair. A dark oak wood fence gate coming off of it facing forward. And then grabbing ourselves some polished blackstone. We'll place down a polished blackstone upside down stair like so. And also grabbing some end rods. Or sorry, some chains. We'll place down two chains going forward like so. Now at this point, uh, over here on the right side, or sorry, the left side, we're going to place down a sandstone wall. And over on the right side, we want to go ahead and grab ourselves an item frame. Any black bed. We're going to place down an item frame on the side of the black bed with a uh, black bed in the um, item frame. So on the side of the polished box and stair, black bed in the item frame, and a dark oak wood sign over it if you're on Java. After that, we want to go then place down a birchwood sign here and a birchwood sign over here as, or sorry, birchwood trap door on both sides. And then a birchwood trap door on top of this uh, item frame and then on top of this wall right here. And those will be opened up toward the front as well. On these item frames, we're going to place down. Um, or on those trap doors, we're going to place down item frames with black stained glass panes in them like that. After that, to the sides here for the turrets, we're going to place down a sandstone upside down stair next to the anvil. Like this, and same thing over here. We're going to go then place down a smooth sandstone block going back from those. And then a smooth sandstone upside down stair to both sides like that. And a sandstone stair there in the center. We're going to go then place down item frames there on the sides of these blocks. And black stained glass panes in those item frames. And same thing over here as well, like that. If you are on uh, Bedrock, you will not be able to place the item frames and buttons in the same block space. If that's the case, I would recommend probably just placing down the item frames and disregarding those buttons, as I feel like the item frames add a little bit more detail there in term, or a little bit more to the structure rather than those buttons there. So um, just uh, heads up there for you guys. Anyways, after that, on the top here, we're going to go ahead and grab a skeleton skull. We're going to place down a skeleton skull on top of these stairs at a slight angle like so. A standstone slab here. And then a um, skeleton skull at about a 45 degree on the back. And then a skeleton skull on top of that stair there on the very back. And once you have that done, the last thing really we have to do here for the machine gun is to go ahead and put a red stair repeater on top of that polished blackstone stair. Separate the notches. And that right there will basically uh, wrap up that turret up on top there. With that though, that right there is going to wrap up my tutorial here. Or my redesign for the M109A7 Paladin. Uh, hopefully you guys do enjoy the build and are able to put it to good use. If you do do end up using this build, I do ask you guys to give me proper credit for it. This being from a side of the build, tweet to my channel or this video if this does bring you to media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to for a project you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. Again, a big special thanks to Patreon supporter Destroyer of Rolls for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. With that, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary204, and I'll see you guys next time.